from Stardust Bowl in Hamlin, Indiana. ESPN presents live coverage of the Denny's PBA Tour. It's the Bowlers Paradise.com Classic. We have four finalists, and they're ready to roll. This PBA Hall of Famer's 31 wins are the fourth most all time. He has earned nearly $3 million in his storied career. From St. Ann, Missouri, PDW Pete Weber. That's right, I am PDW. PDW is back, yeah. battling back from a nagging shoulder yeah. injury. He bowled the maximum 21 games yeah. in match play this week, right. now needing only two more wins to capture title number 32. One of the hottest bowlers on tour, he's on a 15 television match winning streak. With two wins today, he will set a new PBA record. From Simpsonville, South Carolina, Tommy Jones. Can anyone stop the Jones Express? He hasn't lost a match on television in over two years. Victories equal confidence, and TJ just may be the most confident guy on tour. From Elmira, New York, he has four PBA titles and today looks to break a 39 tournament dry spell. Ryan Schaefer. In the round of eight, Ryan saved his best for last, shooting 268 in game seven against Norm Duke. When Ryan combines a good ball reaction with his ever present emotions, the results could be explosive. The 2003 PBA Rookie of the Year. The 2004 PBA points leader, nine TV Finals appearances. Today he looks for title number one from Lockport, New York, Brad Angelo. Brad Angelo has done everything on the tour except win. He crushed last week's winner Jason Couch for zip in the round of eight to make the show. Now can he ride the wave of momentum and capture his holy grail? No questions there, baby, no questions there. These are your bowlers competing for the title in the 2005 BowlersParadise.com Classic. Tour returns to Indiana for the 31st time. First ever in the city of Hammond. We are 45 minutes or so from downtown Chicago. And we have a great fielder bowler as all. We're PBA Rookies of the Year at one time. Some of the great storylines to follow. Randy, let's get started with the brackets. Where have you been, PDW? Semifinal number one, Pitts Pete Weber, making his first TV appearance in 666 days. And Tommy Jones, who has won an astounding 83% of his TV matches in his career. In the second semifinal, Ryan Schaefer, who outlasted Norm Duke in an epic round of eight match, takes on Brad Angelo, who has made multiple TV appearances for the three straight seasons. All right, Randy, what a great field of bowlers. What a great first semifinal. Tommy, let's start with you, one of the Red Hot Bowlers on tour and a chance to make some history today. How do you look at setting records? Well, you know, the record, the record would be great, but, you know, it's, there's four great guys here at Bolton, and, you know, I just want to go out here and take his tournament. I grew up idolizing Pete Weber, and it's an honor to be able to bowl him on TV. Thanks for your time, Tommy. <laughs> Pete, it's been a long time since you've been on TV, since you've seen these sunglasses. <laughs> February 8, 2004, U.S. Open in California. How does it feel to be back? It just feels great to be back. Uh, you know, with everything that happened, it's just nice to bowl good again and, and have the confidence coming into the TV show. Thanks for your time, Pete. Right. Great matchup, Randy, head ahead here. Let's look at the Viper Oil pattern. It's 37 feet long. Yeah, and this pattern lends itself to multiple angles, and I'm going to show you just why that is. The players were going to start playing the middle part of the lane because there's a little bit more friction created just by the characteristics of the center. They're going to try to keep the ball in this little zone right here. These two little blips there are kind of indications of where they want to keep it. That's where they're going to start. Now, when the pattern blows apart, this is where the multiple angles come into play. The guys that like to hook it a lot, like Pete and Tommy, they're going to jump way in. Remember, it's going to be a big move. Other guys this week, well, if they like to go straight, that's another option. And you can see by their high and low games this week, when you lost your ball reaction, it really went south. But when you had it, it was good to you. The other key this week was ball speed, Dave Ryan. You had to keep your ball soft, soft speed, 
to get the ball to recover down the lane. Good start, Pete Weber. 666 days between TV appearances. It goes all the way back to 2004. And his wife, Tracy, watching. Pete is relieved to have that first ball out of his hand. He told us before the match today that was a big concern. That first shot. Amazing, 106 shows under your belt and you still get nervous. Tommy Jones, the high rev rate, the big cranker. We've seen him start even further inside. We'll see as the lanes break down. Randy, our first ace hardware matchup of the day. Real tight matchup, but keep in mind, Pete Weber with all those titles, all those victories, but he's going up against the hottest guy on the planet in Tommy Jones. Both players playing their favorite part on the lane. See what Pete D.W. did in terms of strike percentage, number one for the week in match play. Tommy Jones right behind him in fifth. Jones has a split to deal with here. The 210, not an easy shot at all, Randy, to try to pick up this mark. Remember, we talked about ball speed, and if you get a little too firm, the ball just doesn't grip hard enough down the lane. He's got to get the ball to the left side of the two pin, slide it over into the 10. He does not do either. He whiffs on it and just gets an eight count. It's an early open frame for Jones, who has been incredible on TV, as we've said. 15 straight TV wins. One shy of the all-time record held by Jim Pensack between 89 and 91, 16 in a row. So can do it again. He's got the sunglasses working, looks for a second straight strike, has it! Will help on the 10 pin for PDW. One of the best releases the sport of bowling has ever known. You see that hand rotate around the side, here comes the ball, it's going to crush the pocket and the six goes to the sidewall and does its business on the 10. the mark. Now I let it off my hand a little too good. And it's a washout with the head pin and the 10 pin up. Remember we talked about it in the oil pattern. If you got it on the other side of that hump, watch this ball. It's going to wiggle. It gets too far to the right. Look at that. It never recovers from that. Does not convert. Now the 410 up for him. So after the great start, an eight count for each. Jones in his second frame, Pete in his third, and two opens. How do the bowlers rebound from the open frames here? Well, Tommy Jones has to watch his ball speed, but on this last shot, Pete Weber just got it too far right. He got it on that the other side of that spot. Tommy Jones's case was just a little too firm. That is way high through the nose, just a six. Pin count there for Tommy Jones. That was a quality effort. Look at the numbers. Spare comparison. Match played this week from the round of 32 on. Tommy, a recent dad. Little Ella Claire, born in November. She was five weeks early. Tommy had a bolt out of his tour stop practice in Omaha to make it home. Look at that, a second straight open frame for Tommy Jones, who is derailing here in front of us. This is a complete shock, Randy. He's been so solid on TV. Yeah, and, and this spare here is tough to begin with, but on this pattern, I think it's, it's especially tough. Even with all that hook and all those revs, Tommy Jones still can get that ball to turn the corner. One of the hottest bowlers on tour has back-to-back -back opens. He's third in tour rankings, first in money, just surpassed Mike Scroggins by $500. With his minimum here. And that's off the mark, too. Another light switch zone hit. 
And we are seeing two struggling bowlers at the moment. And this is getting ugly early. Tommy Jones, the exact same leave again on the left lane. He just went to his bag to grab another bowling ball. He's going to make an adjustment. I think probably something a little bit more aggressive so Tommy can stay in his comfort zone. This is a great bowler, folks. 15 in a row on TV's one. Already won two titles this year. However, another open frame for Jones. This is a complete shock to us. Tommy Jones, third in points. He is fourth in average. He has won two titles. He's first in money, as we told you about. Norm Duke has made back-to-back -back shows, has done very well also there in points. Patrick Gallon, player of the year last year, 12. Chris Barnes, back trouble, withdrew this week. Three straight tournaments he's been affected by. And the great Walter Williams Jr., a lot of trouble too this year. All right, that was a good shot. A major struggle for Walter Ray. We're back to Pete. Right now, Pete Weber, all he's doing is trying to get, the, get rid of the butterflies and try to avoid open frames. His opponent, Tommy Jones, has already taken care of that. Make your spares, keep the ball in play. And find the right line to the pocket. It has been a long time, folks, since he's been on TV. A little stumble there for Pete on the way to the approach. Yeah, Barishnikov, he is not. <laughs> He yeah. did not make TV last year. The first season since 95. He didn't make a show. Uncharted water is for the great Pete Weber. That's high. Look no, out. No, oh, no. 7-10. No, 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 no. You saw this a lot if you were here watching the qualifying and match play this week. When the players made mistakes, uh, they, they were left with ugly stuff like this split here. Two 8-10s, two 10s. As we've seen, every time we get a 7-10 up on TV, it's been a long time. And it will continue to be a long time. Jess Stabrook of 91. Back in Tucson. Well, he threw it nice and hard at that 10-pin, but he got it on the wrong side. In order to get that 10-pin to come out, you got to get it on the left side or the left quarter. And then hope for some luck. What is happening, Randy, between these two great bowlers? We are seeing major breakdowns here. Well, the lane conditions were tough this week to begin with. That's why the averages were so low, and they had a tendency to change and change rapidly. That's off the mark, too, for Jones. So he went to a different ball, and he went much straighter on that shot, and that didn't work. So, you know, they, they went through this the entire week. Hmm. Only had one 300 game the entire tournament so far. Rudy Kazimassis. On this Viper pattern. Major struggles. We'll see which of these two greats can overcome the tough conditions. Tommy Jones needed seven games in the round of eight. Hit by Robert Smith, one of his good buddies on tour. Chris Collins, he was down 0-2. Big hole to climb out of in the round of 16 match play. Those are best of seven matches. A sweep of Fagan in the round of 32. Three out of our four players that are on the telecast today went to, to game sevens in the round of eight. Robert Smith needing a double. He got the first hit, left a four pin. A lot of commotion going on Friday night. Right through the nose. Is that ever high? Made another ball change, and that didn't work. So right now it, it looks like a fishing tournament out there rather than a bowling tournament. Tried to go a little bit straighter. Now, now, this is what he did. He took a ball that didn't hook as much in the back end on the right lane and tried to go straight with that. That didn't hook in the, in, up into the pocket enough, so he goes to a little bit more aggressive bowling ball in the left lane, tries to do the same thing. That ball goes high. He told us last night, Randy, he thought he had a good idea after practice on the TV pair about the transition. With his red rate being highest of the four bowlers on the show today, he felt he could really carve his path to the pocket and be in command, but that really hasn't been the case. Look at all the open frames. Pete Weber, in his first TV appearance since February of 2004, has a 19-pin lead. It has been ugly, but each will struggle to try to overcome the tough conditions. Randy and I return in a moment. We'll talk about Pete's tough year next. Three different active PBA bowlers have won multiple titles here in the state of Indiana. Pete Weber, one of those. He took home the 91 U.S. Open 
the 92 TPC in Indianapolis. He's about halfway through his match with Tommy Jones. A struggle so far for each. Welcome one and all, Hammond, Indiana. Dave Ryan alongside my partner as usual, Randy Peterson. Live coverage of the Denny's PBA Tour here on ESPN. So glad to have you with us. Well, we've got three big storylines today. Can Brad Angelo break through win his first ever PBA title? Tommy Jones goes for the record. Straight TV victories. But Randy, the biggest one, the headliner, Pete Weber, trying to rebound from the most difficult year of his life. Yeah, not only physically, but emotionally. Pete suffered a devastating shoulder injury, actually a fracture to his shoulder. Then he tore the muscle off the bone, and that was the end of his season last season. But emotionally, uh, a brutal, brutal year for the Weber family. The passing of the great Dick Weber. Um, it, it's just been a really, really tough road. But you know what? Pete said, hey, it's time to move on. We've all went through our grieving period. It's time to move on and get on with our lives. And I know my father, Dick, will be watching today. Tracy, his wife, has helped him through the difficult grieving process. He said everyone in his family, his brother, sister, his mother, Tracy, had all come to grips with the passing of Dick, all except for Pete. Best shot we've seen all day from Miley Bowler. Maybe they'll get in the groove now. And maybe the, the commercial break helped settle Pete a little bit and maybe helped him try to clear his thoughts. But, but you're right, Dave, this is perfect. Pete's making a ball change on the left lane. He's going to a ball that doesn't roll quite as early. It's a little bit more, more lengthy and a lot more back endy. Does that make sense? Back endy? Wow, nice ball change there. Perfect strategical move there from Pete Weber, who told us he was so miserable after the passing of his father, he actually considered retiring from bowling. He was that out of it, that destroyed. Yeah, and I think, you know, we. The Weber family owes a lot to Juanita, Dick's wife, Pete's mom. She was the one that was really instrumental in getting the family back on their feet and saying, hey, listen, guys, um, it's, it, we, we've gone through it. We've, we're all going to miss him, but we have to get on. And I think that's when Pete finally woke up and said, you know what? Dad would want me to get back out here and do what I do best. Nice adjustment from Tommy Jones. Also, what he need to get on track? Same kind of line Petey's playing on that right lane. But again, there's a fine line. There is a little bit of room right and a little bit a little bit of room left of target, but you better throw it good. Watch Pete Weber not watching. That's something his wife Tracy suggested earlier this season. Don't pay attention to what the other bowler's doing. Worry about yourself. Sometimes Pete will actually use an iPod with some heavy metal. Ten pin for Jones. So he isn't focused at all on what his opponent is up to. And what Tommy is up to is trying to get the 10 pin. Well, I think Tommy made the right adjustment. He went to his strength. He moved deeper to the inside part of the lane, got a little softer, and used that big high rev rate to try to get that ball to turn the corner. The reason why he left that 10 pin, Dave Ryan, the ball made the corner a little bit too late. You can see some of the struggles our guys are going through. No matter how good you are, sometimes the lanes don't cooperate. Look at the designs they're leaving. Again, the same lane, Tommy Jones goes 210. Pete Weber, that lane, right through the face. Pays the ultimate price, 710. Pete, a real crowd favorite. What a reaction when he's introduced here. Start of our telecast today. Come on. Struggles for each, each of our TV pair today. Hasn't been easy. Look out. Wow. The ball listens and hooks perfectly back in on 37 foot viper pattern. Petey said he saw his brother Rich last week and, he, and Rich said, you know what, you, everything looks pretty good, but it looks like you're squeezing it. Just relax your swing. He also worked with some of his ball rep, some of the reps from Storm, Chris Schlemmer, Dave Sims, Steve Plumpkin. They tried to get Pete to get his hand more up the back to get the ball to react sooner. Back 
team just like that. Great look from our crew on the release. And Tracy loves it. Back to TJ. That's high. Oh, through the nose. Multiple pin leave again here. The double wood. 3-9 and the 10 stands as well. Foundation frame, ninth frame rate. It's dangerous for Tommy Jones in this huge hole. Yeah, and it's it's all but over for Tommy Jones. If you know his only chance of striking out was some disaster hit Pete Weber. But for all intents and purposes, Pete Weber's going to win this match and he's going to move on Thanks, to the Rich. finals. And he thanks his brother, Rich. That was just before the tournament in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Rich told him, what is going on with your release? Let go of the ball. You're hanging on to it too long. It's erratic. He said, Pete, I've watched you throw four balls. They've all gone in a different spot. You've got to be more consistent with the release, and he's done that now. Yeah, and I think that was probably an end result of the injury. Mm. Lots of shoulder troubles for Pete Weber. Too little too late, it appears, for Jones. It is all but over. Pete Weber about to win his 99th career TV match. It is officially over now. He has done it. And if he takes home the title, 100. He'll be just the second in PBA history to win 100 TV matches. The all-time leader, Hall of Famer, Walter A. Williams, Jr. 130 TV wins. Speaking of which, the streak will end for Tommy Jones at 15 in a row. He will not tie Jim Pensack's record of 16 straight TV victories. This is a guy, folks, who's gone 20 and 1 in his last 21 TV matches, but it all ends today to the great Pete Weber, who is back. If, you know, Tommy Jones just got faked out by his ball reaction. Watch this. I, get, I guarantee you there's another one. Tommy Jones starts with that ball. He would have given Pete all he wanted. Two oh seven one sixty seven. It wasn't pretty, but Pete Weber's return to TV successful. He'll take on the winner of this one, Schaefer and Angelo. Here for the Bowlers Paradise.com Classic. Coming up, it's the Denny's PBA Tour Skills Challenge. Parker Bone the third and Tom Baker, two Hall of Famers, head to head with some wild and wacky shots. A pin on a ball? Yeah. In his first TV appearance since February of 2004, Pete Weber successful. Dispatches of Tommy Jones. He's to the final to take on the winner of the upcoming semifinal, Brad Angelo and Ryan Schaefer. Time now to turn our attention to the PBA Skills Challenge. We've got two Hall of Famers going head to head. We'll see some great trick shots. Can a pin be thrown at a ball? We are set for this matchup between Tom Baker and PBA Hall of Famer Parker Bone the third. It's a round of 16 matchup. Now, everybody, you have to understand, when we all go bowling, we throw a ball at the pin. Correct. Well, you're noticing there is my five pin. We, fakes, that's me and you and me, we're going to throw a pin at the ball. You must knock it off the deck to complete the shot. I, I never heard of that. That's reverse. <laughs> What's he, what's he stay up at night and think of these things or what? Tom, I think that's exactly what he does. Tom Baker, also a PBA Hall of Famer. He won a world championship a couple years back. He's exempt for a long time. Creative right. shot here from Parker. Ball down the lane. No, now wait a second here. Optical illusion. It's not the same. It's round. Pin. Let's try to hit it. Parker, maybe a pin boy back in his earlier years. Oh, he's got it. What a shot. He absolutely nailed that. Now, Tom, you get to practice. <laughs> God, I don't even know how you do this. I've never seen that before in my life. Uh -huh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Once again, I've never tried this one before. Okay. Here we go, huh? Tom is tearing it up on the senior PBA tour. This is there, I guarantee you not <laughs> track shots. Very close, great <laughs> set, Tom. The first strike goes to Parker Bone the third. Big four.
Parker going with bowling Thanks, balls ready? on the I'm shot instead of the bowling pin. A little more conventional. With two balls. You Takes care of the big four. I believe you did. That is nice. Now you really want to make me look stupid. Everybody, I have to admit, I watched Bakes try two balls over there. It ain't pretty. This is good. Better stand back. It's good. Better you stand know, back. You know, as a matter of fact, I want a front row seat right here. <laughs> <laughs> that, Randy, is official trash look, talk. Right? It's kind of good. <laughs> and Baker. Wow. Ooh, double gutter ball. I didn't want to trouble with that one. <laughs> two strikes to none. Parker Bone the third. Two for Parker Bone the third. One more and he wins the match. Number batch. five on my list. All right, number five. Everybody knows in the sport of bowling, occasionally you throw a shot and you leave double wood. Well, if you watch closely, I'm going to set up a couple more pins this time. We're going to shoot double wood times three. Six consecutive pins. All right, Bakes, we're leaving the one and the five pin. I put a pin behind the five pin. I put a pin between the one and the five. There's another pin in front of the one pin. And here's another one in front of that. Object everyone, throw one bowling ball and try to convert, call it whatever number you want, all six pins at the other end. This is a tough shot. Ever try this one? No, never. And I think the only chance Tom Baker has is if he would have pressed the reset button while Parker Bone was in the pin deck. Look out. Oh, that sits down. Way too much time on his hands. That made me dizzy already just looking at it. Yeah, you funny guy. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's try this one. Hit that one in the front. Hit the one in the front? That's the only one? He seems very unsure of himself, Randy. Parker really picking on the old guy. Merciless. <laughs> All right, a couple another hand down for, for Tom Baker. <laughs> Parker Bone the third knocks off Tom Baker in a matchup of Hall of Famers. Three strikes to none. He's off to the next round. Coming up next week, skill challenge continues. Mike Machuga takes on last year's player of the year. PA, will we see the flop? We'll find out. That would be something as the skills challenge continues on the road. The Denny's PBA Tour schedule, Keystone State Championship, Mechanicsburg, PA. That's where we're headed. And the programs at ABC West Lanes in Mechanicsburg. Log on to PBA.com for tickets to both the show and programs. Following week, Clifton Park, New York, near Albany Empire State Classic. You see the bottom of your screen, spare time, Clifton Park and Latham, New York. The program sites on the 14th and 17th. The other semifinal to see who takes on PDW in the final today. Brad Angelo looking for his first title. Ryan Schaefer wants another. And the great Pete Weber through to the final. Looks for his 32nd career win. Meanwhile, Tommy Jones bid to tie the record for straight TV victories ends. Next, the semifinal, Angelo Schaefer. They are joined now by Randy Peterson. Well, uh, maybe one thing that a lot of folks don't know about Ryan Schaefer is the fact that he's a diabetic recently fitted with an, an insulin pump. No, folks, that is not a cell phone on his back pocket. And Ryan, you said that it's, it's vital for you to be able to perform at your best physically. You have to keep your emotions in check. How do you do that in, under this environment? I just try not to get too excited when I throw a strike or too upset when I don't. Uh, unless it's the end of the game and I've won a match like against Norm the other night, I kind of let it out. Okay, thanks for your time. Good luck. <laughs> Brad? Obviously, in the first semifinal match, Pete and Tommy Jones really struggled to get to the pocket. What have you learned from that, and what's, what, what, how are you going to attack the lane pattern today? Well, I'm going to try to play a little bit straighter. Uh, uh, the, the championship pair here seems to play a little different than it has all week. Um, I actually bowled uh, on this pair during one of my matches, and uh, it's, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to try to square up, go a little straighter with a strike zone, and, and hopefully make good shots. Thanks, Brad. Good luck. Dave, we'll see if that strategy pays off. The other two guys like to hook it. All right, Randy, good luck. Wished by the good friends from upstate New York. Brad from Lockport near Buffalo. And Ryan Schaefer from Elmira, southern tier near the Pennsylvania border, not far from Syracuse. And we saw the sweat on the brow of Brad Angelo a moment ago. And that graphic, 65 events, no wins. 
He told us last night, hey, I've been to nine tournaments. I haven't won yet. Now is my time. Ryan Schaefer wants to get back in the winner's circle. Not the dispatch of his good buddy from New York State first. <laughs> Great start. Keep going. Keep going. You got to love it. First ever TV matchup between these two. You you don't know the whole story. Reference there. Some of the fans giving Ryan a bit of a hard time. I mentioned the emotion a moment ago in Randy's interview. Round of eight match with Norm Duke. It was very heated. Needless to say, between the two. Lots of emotions that night. Four pin for Angelo. Quite honestly, I'm not real sure about this move that, that Brad's making, and I know that he's been working on being more versatile and working on a straight game, but Brad's strength is in and slow wheeling it. That's a very deliberate approach. A little hesitation. As he gets to the foul line, takes care of the single pin conversion, leading us to the ace hardware matchup between the Empire State boys, Schaefer and Angelo. Brad Angelo, five pins a game, higher average. But keep in mind, Ryan Schaefer, a four-time winner on the PBA Tour. Brad Angelo is still looking for his first title. Check out the strike ranks this week. Schaefer, well behind Angelo's third place standing in that stat. Brad, not even close. That ball never reacted the way he wanted, and is way light. This ball looks like a bald tire on a really wet road. Absolutely zero traction. Wash out. Wow. Good effort, but the four pin stands an open frame, and that leads us to a discussion about Brian Angelo as we watch the pin deck here, Randy. He had a very difficult spare to try to pick up. He told us last night, Hey, some of the matches I've been in when I haven't won, they've been nerves. Sometimes they've been bad shots. Sometimes the opponent has bowled well. What does it have to finally do to get on track? Well, I think he just has to make better decisions. You know, he said that, uh, you know, I bowled really good sometimes. Sometimes it was just bad, bad decision making. And honestly, I think today, bad decision making. Mm. Great start for Schaefer. Got a double chance for a 36 pin lead. Let's see how Ryan got here. Qualified 15th. Mentioned the Duke match in the round of eight. A lot of emotion in the building. A lot of fans really side with Norm anyway. He's a fan favorite, the Duke name. And he and Ryan got into some trash talking. It was pretty heated the other night here. And the fans who have come back from that round of eight match watched it. Have remembered. The line's here, Norm isn't, and that is high. I don't know if there was so much trash talk. I mean, it, it was a full-blown, heated argument. 6'10". Mm. See, the one thing about the way Ryan Schaefer's playing the lanes is when he does make a mistake, which this, this time it was too far left of target, at least he leaves himself something to make, the 6'10". In his 37th career television appearance, first of the season, Schaefer going for his fifth career title today in Hammond. And we are headed to the Keystone State Championship next week as the coverage of the Denny's PBA Tour rolls on. $232,000 in prize money, championship, a chance for an exemption, depending on who is in that TV show, the Final Four. And Denny's PBA Tour and ESPN Sunday at 1 Eastern. For more, log on to ESPN.com. As we head to the Eastern Time Zone after plenty of time here on the central of the mountain. Better adjustment for Angelo, certainly, who's overcome a very serious rib and back injury, we'll tell you about. Yeah, that's a real good shot here. And you can see Brad known primarily for a guy that likes to get in and soft hook it and get his hand around the side. You can see the hard work he's put in and trying to become more versatile. And that shot there was perfect. I mean, he kept his hand behind it, kept the ball on line, hit his target, and the ball performed or behaved correctly. Right in late August at a clinic, an exhibition in Michigan, was setting up a trick shot, had one foot on the gutter cap, about 45 feet down lane. Slipped, tore cartilage in his rib cage. Oh, is that ever high? Another split for Brad Angel. 
That has led to some back problems. <sighs> he struggled physically, just getting back to being healthy now. Well, remember the last time he uh, pulled on the left lane, he got five. This time he got six. Unfortunately, one was a super washout, and this one's a big, ugly split. You asked him about what he saw in that first match between Weber and Jones, and look out, just a seven-pin count for the 2003 PBA Rookie of the Year. He just moved into a brand new house with his wife, Michelle. Ball fight 11th, got by Jason Couch, who knocked him out of the prior tournament in the round of 16. That match against Couch, who won last week in Vernon Hills, was four-game sweep in the round of eight this week. Shape a little high. A little chip four. They'll take late help on number four very gladly. That's a shame when that happens. <laughs> Bowler's best friend right here, trip four. I used to leave those. All right, I'm sorry, I used to trip those fours out. See this shot from our crew from behind Ryan there. He's got the insulin pump. About four or five times a day, he will send steady stream of insulin into his system. But as you mentioned, emotions have to be kept in check, otherwise you can really get thrown off. So we're not seeing the hooping and hollering we've seen from Ryan in the past on TV when he's won his titles. He's keeping things on an even keel, and it's working for him. Yeah, you know, he, he gets that adrenaline rush, and, and it messes with his blood sugar, and it takes him a little bit longer to kind of come back down from that. So the best thing for him to do is just kind of bowl boring. Which is working just fine with a 50-pin lead. His doctor convinced him to go to that pump at the end of July. He had been trying for a few years to get Ryan to use it. Well, he's got that lane. Now what does he do on the left lane? Wow. 50% of his TV matches have been a major struggle for Brad Angelo. He's down by 50 pins and the max numbers. All Ryan Schaefer right now. Angelo trying to rebound from that injury. He and his family moved to a new house, Labor Day weekend. He couldn't move a box. He was in that much pain. Tried to slide some boxes with his feet. That's all he could do. Trying to rebound. And he got a big break on number seven there. He is in a huge hole. Head to head with Ryan Schaefer to see who has the right to take on Pete Weber in the final from Hammond. Pete Weber not only back, he is through to the final. He'll take on the winner of this one, Ryan Schaefer, head-to-head -head with Brad Angelo. A chance for a turkey and a 50-pin lead coming up for Schaefer. To compete on the PBA Tour, a bowler needs to be extremely versatile. Randy demonstrates a couple of different styles in this week's Dexter approach. Versatility is the name of the game on the Denny's PBA Tour. That's why you see guys like Tommy Jones and Norm Duke on the telecast week in and week out. These guys are able to hook the ball when they want and go straight when they want. And I'm here today to show you just how they go about doing this. To throw the ball straighter and faster, what these guys do is they move back on the approach. Their starting position is a little bit higher. But the trick is to get the ball out in front of you as quick and as early as possible. That gets the feet moving. Now, in order to throw the ball slower and hook it more, what we've got to do is bring our ball speed down. And the way we do that is we move up on the approach. We move up on the approach, our starting position is now going to change. We're not going to hold it up here, we're going to hold it nice and low. Also, the pace that we move the ball out in front of us is going to get much slower, and it's going to happen much later. This will give us the opportunity to really hook it at the bottom of the swing. So there you have it. If you want to be a star on the PBA Tour these days, you better be versatile. This week's Dexter Approach partner pretty good at that. Well, you know, Dave. Back was in the that day. the first take? Back in the day. Really? Actually, it, it was two takes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a struggle. We've not seen three straight strikes all day. Chance for a turkey here and a huge lead for Shea. 
50 pins if he converts. And he does. How'd you like to run after him for a living? I wouldn't. He may be the best in the game right now. That'd be a lot of fun. I, well, I think he's the best running back in football. Chargers going far enough. Fifth straight win and another strike possibly for Schaefer. He's got a two pin. Uh, even, even though Five Ryan Schaefer is playing in, he's not bellying the ball, meaning he's not going as far right with it like we saw Tommy Jones and Pete Weber do. Still trying to hook it, but he's keeping his lines a lot tighter. Therefore, when he does miss, he leaves himself stuff he can make. Remember that same kind of hit for Tommy Jones. He left the 2 a 10 Ryan Schaefer, only the two pin. Ryan, very busy off season. Bolden, nine regionals. And then made his first ever trip to Europe with his wife, Michelle. He went to Germany to appear in a tournament there. And on the way back, stopped through Paris. His wife speaks French, as it turns out. They had a great trip there, first ever to Paris. As we see other finishers, bottom of your screen, round of 32 on. Great Amletto Monticelli, Hall of Famer. Marked up on the third, made our show last week. Mike Scrog, winner at the Masters. <laughs> Angela has his look, but it may be too late. Well, it, you know, again, when the lanes are goofy and tough, anything can happen. I think for Brad to win this, though, he's he's got to stay perfect, 8th, ninth, and 10th. We'll give him 228. Ryan Schaefer right now going at a 227 pace, and when I say pace, that means strike spare the rest of the game. Max numbers. Four-bagger. Adjustments, anticipation with the oil. Pattern breaking down, Randy. That's what it's all about at this level. Now Brad is dialed in. Blue is the first frame. Red is the sixth frame. This is the ball that came up just a little bit light. He just then made a little bit of a move. He moved just a pinch further left and got the ball to go high flush. had the messenger across the deck take out number 10 and he almost had a 7-10 for a second it looked like and Schaefer tries to stay clean well, this is, looks like the Chris Barnes flying eagle going on right here unfortunately goes in front of the 10 pin Ryan Schaefer is one double away from locking this matchup this is a different Ryan Schaefer didn't like it he ran into the side of the yeah. ball return As bowlers make their moves, see how far left he is to start. On the two board there, he's way over. Sometimes you glance against that return. Whoa! Ryan has his mark. From Elmira, New York. 20th year on the tour. Also a PBA Rookie of the Year. All four bowlers on our show took home that honor. It was back in 87. Haven't seen him on TV since Atlanta of last year. Of course. That's way high. And the boys' di disaster with a split still has 3-6 to deal with. When you hear a bowler yell push after he lets go of it, it's because the ball is left of target and he wants it to hold its line to give itself a chance to hit the 1-3 pocket and that one no chance, especially on this pattern. Ups his multi-pin spare conversion numbers. That last TV show for Schaefer, Atlanta, head-to-head -head with Walter A. Williams Jr., who converted the Big Four. First time ever on TV. That was a memorable moment, certainly. There's Nick Melnikoff, owner of BowersParadise.com. Great to see Nick out again on tour. 
Eric Lawrence won the event last year. Brad Angelo made that show. <laughs> Well, that wasn't that bad a shot. Just a pinch left. Of course, he doesn't get the nice break of trip in the four, and now he's in big trouble. If he would have struck out there, he would have forced Ryan Schaefer to double in the tenth frame. Now he needs to convert here and strike out in the tenth frame, and then hope for for some luck, or some bad luck, I should say, for Ryan Schaefer in the tenth frame. Brad Angelo spoke with his wife Michelle last night on the phone from. Lockport near Buffalo, the new house. She said, don't be nervous. Just another day of bowling. Just happens to be on TV. Yet still, it looks like the streak will continue without a victory for Brad. You know what? You got to give him credit. I mean, he, he, he went with his instinct, and that was to go straighter. He didn't find it until halfway through the game. Again, the lanes being as tough as they are, you know, he felt that gave him the best chance to win. But at least he committed to it. All but over now for Ryan Schaefer. All he's got to do is keep it on the lane when he is back up, and he will advance to the final to take on Pete Weber. Brad Angelo spoke with his Two young son. Balls on the, in the final. Two storm balls. Dylan on the phone the other night from Buffalo area. Dylan said, well, Dad, we watch you online in the round of eight victory over couch did you win the trophy yet Brad said not quite son almost sorry Dylan sorry buddy yeah he's Get apologizing to his young son and Dylan said dad will you win the trophy for me and he said I'll try and he did try and there was the apology there to his son Dylan back home was four years old just two needed now for Schaefer. He will take on PDW in the final. Good spot to leave the 4-9. When, when I went down to interview the players, as you see, our winner, who will bowl Pete Weber for the title, Ryan Schaefer came up to me and said, Randy, one of the reasons why I'm bowling so much better is because I started looking much closer on the lane. Instead of looking down at the arrows, I started to look at about 20, or excuse me, about 10 feet. Pete Weber waits in the wings. The Hall of Famer goes for a win against Schaefer next. Here in Hammond, it'll be Schaefer and Weber in the final. We can't wait for that one. Special thanks to Bruce Barton, proprietor at Stardust Bowl 1, for his great help all week. Leading us to the Motel 6, $600,000 reasons to bowl sweepstakes. The winner was Alan Laws. What would he do? I don't want to rush. No, no. and I don't want to no, jerk it. He came a long way, so you can take some time. Right, right. Now <laughs> yeah, you're right. So Alan Laws had his chance bowling out a 300 ball, a strike okay. 10 center in Conrad, Texas, needing six straight yeah. strikes to earn $600,000. Courtesy of Motel 6 with his family watching, couldn't convert the first, but could still win 6,000 with the other strikes. However, leaves two pins. He did take home $600, had a great time competing here at Hammond, Indiana. Mr. Laws and his family really enjoying their weekend here near Chicago and Hammond, Indiana. What a great experience for him. Sunday night, NFL's triple threat. Ladanian Tomlinson leads the high-scoring lightning bolts. The Chargers against the Raiders. AFC West matchup. Chargers in second place behind first place. Denver with that 9-2 record. The Raiders 4-7 in last place in the AFC West as things stand. That's all coming up. In addition to our final... Can Pete Weber win for the first time since 2004 at the U.S. Open? We'll find out next. <laughs> Pete Weber already got by Tommy Jones in the first semifinal. Then for the seventh time in 13 TV appearances, Brad Angelo under 200. He lost to Ryan Schaefer 210 to 196. So Pete and Ryan head-to-head -head for the championship, leading us to our Geico Championship recap. Thanks, Dave. In semifinal number one, Pete Weber defeated Tommy Jones by the score of 207-167. Pete Weber putting an end to Tommy Jones' reign on television. In semifinal number two, Ryan Schaefer defeated Brad Angelo by the score of 210-196. to 196. 
Brad never got on target. Ryan Schaefer doing what he needed to do to steal a victory. He is fourth on the all-time list in PBA Tour titles. Earl Anthony's 41. That's where Williams Jr. has 40. Mark Roth, 34. And then it's Pete. 31. Great start for the Hall of Famer. This is a pro Weber crowd, Dave. It is all Pete in this house right now. No question. That's right. I'll tell you one thing about Ryan Schaefer. A lot of people don't know. He's got a great sense of humor, funny guy, and this guy is tough as nails. Nothing bothers this kid. He's kept his emotions in check because of the insulin pump we told you about. Where is that? On his back. Not a great first ball for Schaefer, who is one and two lifetime, 216 average in three matches on TV against Pete. Changes balls, goes to a less aggressive bowling ball, something that will go much straighter. It's a good tip for the folks at home when the lanes are weird and goofy. Get a ball that doesn't hook and throw it straight. Look out, he chopped it. And on the five pin stands. Open frame early for Schaefer. All right, well, changing balls is a good tip. This, this isn't. Chops the two pin straight back. Open frame early. <laughs> On that lane, see how far left he was. And a big hook, and it pays off. And the farther left of you, you move, the further right you have to throw it, but you also have to have some hand rotation revolutions to get the ball back. And he did on that shot. All 10 down in the pit for Schaefer. Rebounds from the open. Oh, is that off the mark? Never reacted at the back end of this 37-foot oil pattern. What happened, Randy? Good question. Pete thought this was pretty good off his hand in this ball. Never hooks. I mean, never hooks. <laughs> that hit the three pin right in the face, and Pete gave it a stare like, are you kidding? Wow. One, two, four, eight. Look out. Does cover nicely. Boy, that ball hooked at the last second, That's and he exactly covers. <laughs> it was not, Pete, you're right, but he's got all four. And he thinks this ball is going to hook to the left side of the head pin, and it barely catches a piece of the head pin. Okay, shake it off now. It's be interesting to see what happens the next time Pete's on the right lane. He has plenty of TV experience, obviously. Third all-time behind Walter Ray and Earl Ann. 110. Time's on TV for Pete. Ten pin. That ball pushed just a little too late or a little too long down the lane and came in a little late, and that's why he left a sort of a semi-week 10. Got to try to figure out a way to get his ball to pick up another five feet sooner before it starts to go this way. An incredible story for Pete and his family. Overcoming the loss on Valentine's Day of last year. Right the back. Legendary Somebody Dick Weber, the, the Hall of Famer. Only father-son Hall of Fame duo in history. There's Tracy behind him, his wife, who's been such a wonderful companion. So supportive, yet tough when he needs to be as well with Pete. Sometimes that's what it takes, he told us. He's welcome. Can he recover from his tough year and win the day? Look out, Brooklyn strike. Crosses over the head pin. <laughs> little dance there. Yeah, the river dance. <laughs> and now the lanes are just getting ugly. I mean, he's moving in. He's trying to get the ball to get up to the pocket. And this ball. Goes Brooklyn, nice break for a double, and how about a little river dance to celebrate? Well, was that a German Oktoberfest thing you might have learned over in Deutschland? I don't know. 
That was strange. Stick to bowling, Ryan. <laughs> that was really funny. Even match chance for a 10-pin lead with a turkey. Fourth frame. Get up. No double wood instead. Wow. 2-8. Head to PBA.com to buy for the PBA fan on your holiday shopping list. Officially licensed PBA apparel and merchandise, including hats, sweatshirts, T-shirts, and jerseys. All available online at PBA.com. And between now and the end of the year, the PBA offering free shipping on orders of $50 or more. Check it out at PBA.com. Bookmark it today. When lanes get really goofy, this is no gimme right here. Oh, See that? Look out, a chop again, and an eight wow. pin stands and open. Wow. This is a battle of two great bowlers who are going head-to-head -head with difficult oil conditions. Which one rises to the occasion and takes home the title? We find out next. All the way back to February 8th, 2004. Orange County near Disneyland, that arena final U.S. Open. Last time Pete Weber won a tournament. 666 days between TV appearances. The great Pete Weber. Ball change for Petey. Much more aggressive bowling ball. Nice shot. All right. Nice shot. So you know what? He misses the head pin on the right lane. Shoots the spare, almost misses the head pin again. Says, you know what? Lanes are changing again. Better make an adjustment. Goes to a stronger, more aggressive bowling ball. And the good news is it hits the pocket. And with a spare here, he's still clean. Ten pin, and thanks to that. Open on the fourth in addition to the first frame. Trouble for Schaefer leading us to the Ace Hardware matchup. Our final from Hammond. Pete Weber, a little bit higher average. Lane's getting really goofy. Spare conversion goes to Ryan Schaefer, but not apparent in this match. He's already missed two spares. Two different balls for Pete Weber. And a nine pin. Lucky to avoid a split there for Pete. Right. Come on now. Now this ball is real skid flippy. Watch how hard it goes left once it gets down the lane. Almost causing Pete to leave the 4.79. And leaves a nine pin. Another spare here. He's clean through five. So much guessing, anticipation going on with the bowlers here as the oil breaks down. How would you handle it? I don't know, Jay. I mean, shot, you know, shot. when Ryan Schaefer moves further left on the lane and he goes Brooklyn, that's a really bad sign. I'm, you know, I like to go straight. I, I would probably move right and try to find something where Brad Angelo was playing. Even though he didn't win the match, Brad's shot didn't look too bad the last five or six frames. Could be an option. Ball change again for Schaefer. Get up. The mark and somehow almost got the break to get that 10 late and knock down all 10 into the pit. Not only are the guys struggling to get the ball to the pocket, but when they do get to the pocket, the balls aren't striking. And that tells me that it's just not getting or entering the 1 3 the right way. Single pin numbers. Did you get one? All right, I got one. We'll show you where Pete and Ryan Schaefer are playing this lane pattern. This lane pattern has turned into a real ugly mess. You can see that they're both pretty much right on top of each other. Inside fourth arrow going out to about seventh board. But what Ryan Schaefer has now done is he has actually moved right, and he's trying to play more in that area there. See if the adjustments pay off. Six frame. Hold it. Close, but not quite, Ryan. Well, it's a lot better than what he had. Mm. This is the same part of the lane that Brad Angelo was trying to play. At least he can make an adjustment off of that, cover the spare. Shouldn't have any troubles making the four pin. Randy Ryan told us last night he actually wished he was the first match of the show because of the way he knew the oil would break down. How would that have helped him? 
Well, it would have just given him one more game. But, you know, quite honestly, I'm not sure that would have been a help because of the way the lanes have broken down. I mean, they've gotten to be so ugly. You just have to keep an open mind and keep all your options available. Tracy watching. Look out. Look out is Ryan Brooklyn strike. He says, that's one Brooklyn for me. Little Ryan, you had one. I get one. What a day on the lanes we've had. Yeah, one for you. <laughs> Tracy, a great bowler in her own right. She knows the score. You don't have to add it up for her. Professional bowlers never like to have Brooklyn's thrown at them. 23 pin lead. Bingo. Fired up. Ryan told us because of the insulin pump, he can't get that fight. Throw off his game entirely. You know he's feeling it. Look out. Wow. Going right at the head pin. That's a break. Yeah, a little bit of trouble with the approach. Normally when that happens, you don't get quite the hand you're looking for. Watch this. A little slip right there, but at least he was able to direct it on the intended line and got just enough of the ball to make it turn the corner. Brad, I'm amazed. These bowlers are making big adjustments here. They did it all week long. I mean, it was it was it was that kind of pattern, and, and I think the the PBA kind of prides himself with this Viper pattern is is a multiple angle pattern. Basically, we've seen a lot of angles. Basically, to just, the pocket. Just pick your poison. Right now, Shaver's going right at it. Great shot. Great adjustment. Takes a lot of guts to. Well, a lot of guts and maybe not a whole lot of brains to make a, about a 20-board move, and that's what he's done. But you know what? Ryan didn't have anything where he was. He had nothing to lose by moving there. He had thrown some shots in there in practice, so it wasn't like he was clueless when he made that move. Now it's just a matter of dialing it in, and it looks like he has. Beat for the turkey. And i got to be honest with you, right now, even though Ryan Schaefer's trailing in this match, he has the better ball reaction. You can see that Petey got this one a little bit further to the right, and it just doesn't get back to the pocket. There's a hang spot down the lane if you throw it right. If you get it in, there's a hook spot, and it goes left. It's what we like to call a reverse block. Dry in the middle, tight to the outside. 2-8 double wood for Weber. Look out. Chopped it. Saw Ryan Schaefer do the exact same thing. Ryan open to the first and four frames, and now Weber sees the lead shrink to one. Pete's actually down by one. Right, down one, excuse me. And Ryan Schaefer working on a double. Ryan Schaefer has hit the pocket the last three shots. Disastrous open frame. Repeating the eighth, foundation frame, ninth. Needs a rally. Well, this is Petey's good lane. Petey's good lane, the left lane. The only problem is Ryan Schaefer was the higher seated player. He got choice of what lane he wanted to finish on. Guess what? Ryan Schaefer's going to finish on the left lane. Pete is going to have to finish on the right lane. Max numbers. Schaefer, one pin lead. Turkey ball here, foundation frame for him. Trust your move and let it go. Go up 11. Hold it! Oh my! It didn't hold. Incredible 4-7-10 split. Threw that one pretty good. Just a little bit inside, it doesn't take a lot. And right there, Ryan Schaefer pays the price. But you know what? He's still in this match. He needs to convert the 4-7-10. How did you do it, Randy? Ball to the left side of the four pin, man. Make your best shot of your career right here and give yourself a chance to win this tournament. Wow. Yikes. Just an eight pin total. And open so late in the match now for Schaefer. 
And Pete sees the door wide open. Yeah, and as crazy as things are, Ryan Schaefer needs to strike out in the 10th frame. If he does, he will force Pete Weber to mark in the 10th on Pete's bad lane. But first, Schaefer's got to strike out. Great shot. Last strike for Ryan Schaefer and Pete, who's taking the advice of his wife, Tracy, not to watch his opponent. He tries to stay focused. He's been through so much turmoil in his life. The worst year of his life, he said, passing of several relatives, including his legendary father, Dick. And if Ryan Schaefer does not strike on this ball, Pete Weber will just need good count in the 10th frame to win. Does get it. Great, great shot. That forces Pete Weber to have to mark in the 10th frame. He watched there, didn't he? Went against Tracy's advice. You see what Pete's thinking about there. He's not thinking about having to throw a strike. He's not thinking about the money. He's not thinking about anything other than getting up there and making the shot. No. That's enough. Touch high. Remember Pete opened the last time he was up on the right lane, Dave Ryan. The time before that, he went Brooklyn. Pete is going to have to draw on all of his skills and all of his knowledge to make the right adjustment and the perfect shot right here. And remember, all he needs is a mark. Calls for the re -rack. wisely so. The veteran has to take his time. He wants to think this through. All the way back, February of 2004. Been that long since we've seen him on TV. Wow, what a great shot. All he Ten needs pin. is to make this. He needs to make this. Just four to win for PDW. Are you going to move the pin, or are you going to move the pin, Kirk? Yes. Okay. Welcome back, Pete. Okay. Father did. You saw Tracy pointing up above in memory of the great Dick Weber. words of congratulations to Schaefer for a great week. But the moment belongs Penny, to the great Pete Weber with Penny, that shot. He needed four. He got all he needed.
for the 32nd time. He's a PBA Tour champion. He is a winner again on the PBA Tour, 189-186 over Ryan Schaefer. He is fourth all-time PBA Tour history with 32 wins. In the winner's circle again, he's PDW, and he's joined by Randy with Tracy. Thanks, Dave. Pete, it's been a long time. I know how much you've gone through over the summer. Tell us what you're feeling in your heart right now. Pure enjoyment, pure enjoyment. Uh, I, I'm enjoying this just as much as I think Dad is up there, so I know he was walk, watching out for me. Uh, thanks, Dad, I appreciate it. And uh, it's just great to win again, you know. It, it's been a long time, and everything that's happened in the last year to the, to the Weber family, it's uh, maybe been put behind us now, and we're ready to step forward. Petey, big struggles on the TV pair today, especially the right lane. And you had to finish on the right lane, knowing that you needed a mark. The last, the shot before that, you Brooklyn. What was going through your mind when you stepped up in the tenth frame, knowing that you needed a mark? Uh, I was nervous as could be, Randy. I was just sitting there shaking, just thinking, let it off your hand, let it get off your hand, don't grab it. And it came off my hand pretty good, and I threw a pretty good shot. Fortunately, I didn't strike it, but I did make the spare and kept it on the lane and behind the foul line to win. And uh, it, like I said, it's an honor and a privilege. And uh, Hats off to Ryan Schaefer. I mean, he put up with a lot today, and uh, he's still a great champion and always will be. Tracy, how hard was it for you sitting back there watching this unfold? Oh, this it was incredible. Um, I had my son back there squeezing his hand and uh, just let me chirp in his ear, and that, that was good. That was a crazy day, but worked out perfect. Petey, was that the toughest 10 pin you've ever made in your career? I think it was, Randy, and uh, the way I started shooting spares this year, I wasn't sure if it was going to be made, but uh, I made it, so I'm just happy about that. Tracy P., congratulations on a great win. Dave, back to you. Congratulations. Go to Pete Weber. He raises the trophy again here in Hammond, Indiana. One of the great all-time bowlers. One more time in the winner's circle for the entire crew. My partner, Randy Peterson. It's Dave Ryan saying so long. Be sure to join us again next Sunday at 1 Eastern here on ESPN from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Coming up next here on ESPN, stay with us, the V Foundation Celebrity Golf Classic. What a moment for the Hall of Famer, the legend, P.D.W.